Creation, Book of Clarity, Chapter 10 Her human form was suddenly too real. Her eyes flew open, her consciousness crashing back into her body too quickly. The colors around her were unnatural. Fractured prisms of light splayed in every direction. The room before her that once looked familiar was now distorted, twisted. Everything looked as if the life was drained from it. She felt a burning sensation build in her chest as she cried out in agony. The ticks on the clock were drowned out by her screams. Blood began to pour from her eyes as the lab technicians flooded her room. I'm burning, I'm burning, she screamed. The technicians were frantic, checking their charts against the monitors. The levels seemed normal. Get the doctor. What happened? Tell us what happened. One technician asserted as her vitals were checked. Her body began to convulse as blood spurted from her mouth. What, what, why didn't you tell me this would happen? The technician closest to her looked around at the others. Their faces were frozen in fear. They didn't know. The stories they heard were just that. Rumors. Nothing concrete had ever been communicated to them. This situation had never happened in their facility before. They prided themselves in that. We're sorry. Her eyes rolled back into her head as the doctor arrived with nurses. Together, the medical team used a defibrillator to try and restore her consciousness. But her limp body stopped moving. The clock ticked on. 86,249. 86,250. 86,251. A meeting is being held in a large tan room. Dozens of lab technicians, doctors, a handful of brain specialists, and a spiritual guru are discussing the trainee. How did this happen? A petite woman with thick brows and a stern mouth asks this to the group in front of her. She has a strict voice and a demanding presence. A lab technician began to answer. Miss Director, Why I is a lab technician speaking when I want to hear from a brain specialist. No response. A doctor? Nothing. The medical team exchanged glances. The damned spiritual guru? Silence crowd looked at each other for a while. The lab technician from before spoke up again. I, I'm sorry for interrupting again, Miss Director. I do have something to point out. The director turned to peer at the lab tech. Everyone did. He picked up a tablet that displayed a brain scan. He nervously swiped at the screen and projected it onto the wall behind the director. The lights in the room dimmed as the crowd turned around to look. The image showed a bird's eye view scan of a brain, her brain. This is a top view of the trainee's brain. We recorded all brain activity during the nearly 23 hours she was asleep conducting her creation tasks. Her assigned creation this time was of clarity. The lab tech switched to another image that showed a different brain. This second image is a brain scan of a now advanced trainee. This image was also recorded when she was assigned the same word. The lab tech switched to another screen that had an image of the two brains side by side. The images showed the brain activities as they progressed through the training. Placed together, both brains look similar, the lab tech said while pointing to different areas on the scans. The lab tech played a video of both trainees' brain activity. Here is a recording of their brain activity during similar stages of their sessions. If you look closely, they have nearly identical patterns during times they were stressed 
such as when they were prematurely ejected, and times where they were at rest, such as when they were in the process of creating. They are completely identical, nothing out of the ordinary until the lab tech stops the recording. About 22 hours in, 35 minutes and 13 seconds before she woke up, our late trainee's brain stopped showing traces of any activity, while trainee number two stayed connected like normal. What exactly do you mean? The director's gaze was piercing. I mean, I mean, this would indicate that for about 30 minutes, the trainee went brain dead. Is that possible? Didn't she wake up screaming? Yes, she, she did. So how? Why didn't you catch this while it was happening? The director's hands clenched at her sides. This hasn't exactly happened before. Of course, it hasn't happened before. Nothing we're doing in this facility has happened before. I want to know a reason I hired you for answers. Well, Neuro One has reported incidents like this. We one. are not them. We are a top of the line neural space facility with the best, most secure access to the cosmic realms that anyone has ever seen, experienced, or felt. Things that happen to Neurosis One should never happen to us. There was a silence. The lab tech closed the screen and the lights in the meeting room turned back on to full brightness. Is no one going to say anything? After a long pause, the spiritual guru spoke up. Mies director, your technicians and doctors, your specialists have all been through each and every lab report. They've scanned through each log of disruption in the trainee's brain patterns. They even attempted to animate the brain log so we could see exactly what she saw. But it didn't work. Not even I can give you an answer as to why or even how this happened. I may know a lot of things, but the one thing I have always been was a student. There's a lot to learn in the universe. A few experiments in opening realities doesn't give us enough knowledge of anything. She could have been attacked by dark entities, or she could have even been struck down by the heavens itself for our audacity to play God. That is not a worthy enough answer for me. I apologize. I am just trying to explain in the best way I know how. Really? The doctor turns her cold glare to the guru. Yes, the guru calmly matches the director's stare. Well, I have to disagree, respectfully. The director runs her hands through her bone straight hair. I'm sorry you feel that way. Because if you are truly trying to understand in the best way you knew how, you would be hooked up to the machine and trying to figure it out for us. The director gave a nod, and security located around the room began to stand up. Wait a minute, director, we had an agreement. Oh, I know. We can revisit it once you're done. The director turned her back toward the guru as he is whisked away. Without facing the rest of the group gathered in the room, the director regained her calm. Anyone else have unhelpful insights to add? The room is silent again. Hmm. Interesting. Well, it seems we'll have new data soon. Get back to work. Hello again, this is Michaela Simone Mack, author of Creation, narrator of Book of Clarity. Thank you so much for listening to the very last chapter, the very last episode of Book of Clarity. Ah, I'm so excited to have this out and have you listen to it. Please let me know what you think of the entire book as a whole. Next week, we will be taking a break and the week after we'll be starting back up with Book of Portals.
thank you so much. I hope you have a great next week. And also, please like, share, comment. Tell me what you think. Please share with your friends. Please help me to grow this platform, grow this podcast. I'm so excited to have you here. And I'm so excited for you to hear the next story, Book of Portals, where an astronaut gets lost in space.